and I'm helping Merton TV investigate. Merton Council recently announced that their waste management contractor, Veolia, will be temporarily sending the recycling from the large four-wheeled communal bins for flats to the Beddington incinerator, along with the general waste. They blame Brexit and the pandemic for a shortage of dust cart drivers to provide two different collections, one for recycling and one for general waste. This film follows our Merton TV Investigates expose which revealed that the recycling from every one of the 334 on-street twin bins was being set alight at the Beddington incinerator. After that investigation, we obtained the Weybridge tickets for all South London Waste Partnership vehicles to confirm that recycling was still being taken to the incinerator, despite our documentary and press coverage. Some steps have been taken to improve recycling across the boroughs, but even today, waste described as recycling is not being recycled, at a greater cost to the environment, council taxpayers and the reputation of the councils. In this film, Merton TV Investigates reveals how the original cost-saving contract has been renegotiated, resulting in more money for Veolia while delivering a lower standard in service across most of the SPIs the service performance indicators, which are the target levels and the deductions if Veolia fail to meet contracted service requirements. Let's go through the SPIs, explaining the new relaxed standards. Number one, rectification of missed collections. When the contract started, Veolia had one working day to collect missed collections or would face an undisclosed deduction. The time frame has doubled, allowing them two days to collect. Number two, total missed collections per 100,000. Veolia are permitted to miss 30 or fewer collections per 100,000, penalty free. But over that amount, there are three levels of failure and each one has been adjusted, allowing a different number of missed collections before the next fine kicks in. Number three, emptying of communal recycling receptacles. Originally, Veolia were penalised for each missed communal collection. This has been relaxed to allow them to miss every single one if they want, only needing to collect by the following day if a report of a missed collection is filed. Number four, emptying of communal general waste receptacles. As with the recycling, there is no longer a forfeit for a missed collection. Number five, assisted collections. Assisted collections are offered to elderly or disabled residents who are physically unable to put out their waste. Missed assisted collections used to automatically incur deductions. The new undemanding arrangements allow for a cost-free second chance for Veolia if the resident discovers the failure within two working days. Number six, repeated missed collections. A change has been made from a fixed fine for each repeated missed collection to a new graduated system. Number seven, missed bulky waste collections. The now chargeable service no longer requires collection on the appointed day. Veolia have been granted a further two days to collect before incurring a deduction. Number eight, delivery of receptacles. Required delivery times have been extended. Number nine, removal of fly tips. The original contract required removal of all fly tips within 24 hours. Now, one in 20 can be ignored. Number 11, collecting recycling separately to general waste. This SPI is especially pertinent to Merton Council's recent announcement about the temporary merging of communal recycling and general waste. If the original contract was enforced, each contravention would result in a deduction. Number 12, 
Storage and Segregation of Recyclates This SPI should also invoke payments by the contractor for each tonne of recycling sent to the incinerator. Unfortunately, as the Council has already indicated that both recycling and general waste will be collected at the same time, there will be no way to measure the weight that should have been sent for recycling. Number 13. Delivery of waste to the appropriate delivery point. This is the third SPI relevant to the news that communal recycling is being burnt, as the new arrangement constitutes open transgression. Furthermore, it is worth noting that because Veolia charge more to collect general waste than to collect recycling, the breaches are likely to weigh heavier on the public purse. And because contract secrecy prevents us from knowing the size of any fines, it could well be the case that increased charges essentially cancel out the fines. Number 14. Emptying of litter receptacles. We started with the clearance within two hours of overflowing bins reported. The new lenient schedule allows for up to six working hours in residential areas. Number 15. Street cleanliness of town and district centres. The contract has been eased from maintaining levels of cleanliness to responding to the notification of work needed within two hours. Number 16. Street cleanliness of residential areas. As with town and district centres, Veolia are no longer required to maintain recognised standards. Instead, they are allowed up to one working day to respond to the notification of work needed. Number 17. Street cleaning. Finally, a positive added to the revised contract stipulates that a deduction may be made for the failure to remove street cleaning sacks within one working day of notification. This could be a big source of revenue if residents report the initial abandoned bags and follow up 24 hours later if the same bags are still present. Number 18. Cleaning of drainage systems. The target has dropped from 100% down to just 80%, allowing drains to go unassessed and uncleaned. Number 19. Racist and or offensive graffiti. Veolia are no longer required to get rid of all racist and or offensive graffiti. Number 20. Non-offensive graffiti. Previously, Veolia were required to get rid of all non-offensive graffiti within 48 hours. Now they are permitted to leave some. Number 22. Winter maintenance of salt bins. Before the standards changed, all salt bins had to be at least 50% full during the winter. Now they just need to be filled at the beginning of the season and only refilled if requested. These changes have all been made quietly earlier this year, whilst payments required to be sent to Veolia for their services have been negotiated upwards, removing the savings that we were told outsourcing would create, and whilst there has been a reduction in the workforce and service levels across the four boroughs of Croydon, Kingston, Merton and Sutton, which make up the South London Waste Partnership. Merton TV will continue to monitor, as much as it can, the Veolia contract and the other contracts covered under the arm's length South London Waste Partnership. Notably, this partnership falls outside of being a public authority, as defined by the Freedom of Information Act 2000, thereby creating the possibility of distance from the member councils and, indeed, the hiding of unpopular decisions made by the for-profit contractors. <laughs>